trade, in this case, NAFTA, the North American Free Trade Agreement. The president has been a long critic of this. Now, some, of course, read into that, well, priorities have changed, and maybe they have. It's sometimes in Washington, all you need is the appearance uh, that that is the case. But I do want to focus, and nor am I making big deals out of minor movements. But as soon as he got those words out of his mouth, take a look at what's going to the Dow. It dropped a little further. I am not trying to equate the two and say that that led to a market dip in and of itself. But I find it's timing curious that a market that has been sort of on tender hooks here, waiting to see what's going to happen to those treasured tax cuts, regulatory reform, all of that, and that it might be put off, uh, as no less than Speaker Ryan seemed to indicate today, until the spring or maybe even the summer or maybe the end of summer, August, where you get the idea further, further, further back to Michigan Republican Congressman Justin Amash on all of this. Congressman, where do we stand now? Now, the House Freedom Caucus, of which you're a prominent member, has always been big on making sure everything's paid for, making sure you don't make deficits worse. And apparently that is or was the thinking with a border tax that would presumably pay for some of these uh, tax cuts. Are you insistent or among those insistent on making sure those tax cuts are fully paid for? Well, if the tax cuts are broad-based, then you hope that that improves the economy. Right. Now, if you have selective tax cuts, then, yeah, you should uh, make sure that tax cuts are paid for if they're selective and targeted. Um, that's not the goal of tax reform, though. The goal of tax reform should be to do broad-based tax cuts, in which case you hope that you boost the entire economy and that can improve things. At the same time, uh, the president has suggested a lot of things like his infrastructure plan and a number of other things. Um, we're talking about more defense spending and more domestic spending that, of course, has to be paid for. Of course, we have to find cuts elsewhere. But do you equate, sir, I just want to be clear, the, that tax cuts also have to be paid for. So this idea of a border tax that a lot of your colleagues, I don't know about you, sir, but a lot of your colleagues are keen on because it could raise a good deal of money over the many years. Um, that was going to be important in this argument. And as soon as President Trump indicated he wasn't a fan of it, then a lot of you and your colleagues might have thrown up your hands and said, all right, well, we're kind of going to have to push this back then because we're not on the same page. Is that what is happening now? Well, I haven't reviewed the tax reform package. So what I would say is I distinguish between broad-based tax cuts and selective tax cuts. A lot of times here in Congress, uh, Congress gives out selective tax breaks. These are targeted tax breaks. That's cronyism. In those cases, I'd say, yeah, you have to be, make sure you're paying for it because you're just giving a benefit to someone and you're making everyone else pay for it, essentially, right. because you're changing, you're changing the whole tax structure to help just a, a few companies or a, an industry. But if you have broad-based tax cuts that are uh, broadly applicable to all businesses or all the American people, then no, you don't have to have some kind of offset in the law. The, the point of lowering taxes is to reduce the size of government and you reduce uh, right, spending. Right. No, I, I understand that much, sir, but you'll indulge my uh, yeah. rather ignorant line of questioning here because uh, I'm trying to wrap my substantial skull around this. It, it, there seems to be a little bit of a battle within your party about how to go forward here. There's a camp that is very worried about deficits and debt and, and making sure everything's paid for on a camp that says, well, big tax cuts is, is what got us here uh, and, and, and big tax cuts will really improve growth. Let's go with the big tax cuts. Let, let's not get so bogged down in short-term deficits. They're big as they are. Debt is big as it is. This is a step in that direction. So that seems to be the battle here and, and the party isn't in agreement. Is that safe to say? Well, it's safe to say that that is a battle. So I, I want to be clear. I'm for broad-based tax cuts, and right. I'm also for balancing the budget. So I believe that balancing we do need to Balancing the budget cut... immediately. In other words, I... I... Well, well the, the proposal I have would phase in a balance over 10 years. So okay. I, I don't think you can balance it in one year. So it's would you, very be, would you live, sir, with the prospect of, a, uh, let's say we do get big tax cuts, and as you know, you're a good student of economic history as well, in the beginning it leads to deficits because that money immediately comes out of people's paychecks and not to Washington. Then the money comes in as you get the, the, the you know, the economy, you know, picks up on, based on those taxes, more money comes into Washington. Could you live in the interim with deficits that maybe get worse before they get better? 
only if there's a plan to improve deficits over time. So I see. I you see. can't you can't just have a big tax cut and then decide you're going to continue with all of our uh, large social programs the way they work. Continue with all of the uh, defense spending on so an upward trajectory forever. So ideally, you'd like to forever. offset that, yeah. even though it's not immediate. But you, in your ideal world, you'd like to offset whatever you're doing on one end with with either other programs so, on the other, but something like that. So I'd look at a 10-year window at least and okay. see are we are we bringing the deficit down over 10 years? If you look at any one year or two years, you could have deficits. There's right. no way to avoid that, and and that's going to happen whether we have tax cuts or don't have tax cuts. No, you're so right. So you have to look. It. So let me yeah. ask you. I, I, I'm rude as heck to you, and I know you must be offended. I don't mean to be. I want to no, no, get. Okay. I want to get a handle then on these time figures that I've been given. Uh, the speaker indicating this might be a late spring summer event, maybe August event, before we get this tax cut package. Uh, President Trump in the White House moments ago talking about trade, seemingly signaling that while the party wrestles with this, he's going to continue to follow up on making trade agreements that are freer and fair, uh, in including the North American Free Trade Agreement. And that, that is just the way it's going to be, that if, if those who are hoping for an immediate tax cut it's still in the offing, but pushed further back this year than you guys originally hoped. Is that true? I don't know what's true at this point. Yeah. Um, based on, <laughs> I mean, the the president says a lot of things, and and I don't know what's going to come to fruition and what's not. And I I don't know what our leadership's going to do. Um, they make a lot of promises, and we haven't had those uh, promises fulfilled over the past several years. So. Interesting. Um, I'm a little bit skeptical of, of everyone in Washington, uh, <laughs> frankly. But um, oh, you're, yeah, well, you're one of those guys. So let me. Uh, the, one thing, Congressman, and maybe the, I don't know the House Freedom Caucus kind of view of this. Uh, do you think those tax cuts, if and when they do come, be retroactive to the beginning of this year? Should they be retroactive? Yeah. Yeah, sure. They should be retroactive. But um, again, the issue is what are we doing over the long term, not just what are we doing over one Understood. year or two years. So y you can have tax cuts and um, maybe there's an impact on the deficit, just like you might have Social Security or Medicare reform that might impact the deficit in the short run. But you don't really get the um, long term savings unless you look out, you know, 10 years. You got you got to change the whole program over a long period of time. All right, Congressman, you've been a great sport explaining a lot of this to me and our viewers. We very much appreciate it. Uh, Justin, uh, very good having you on. Thanks, Neil. Appreciate it.